Hi YouTube and welcome to my channel. My name is Patrick. Today we're going to talk about how you can secure your Ubuntu Linux server in just a few easy steps. So these are the essential tips that you need to know to run your server safely. So with that being said, let's dig right in. So you've got an Ubuntu Linux server. Great. Now what? Now you need to keep it safe, because that sucker is going to be under attack, especially if it's facing the public internet. So in this video today, I'm going to give you the essential tips that you need to know in order to secure your Ubuntu Linux server. Now, this is not going to be a deep dive. This is just a surface level look at the things that you can do today to actually secure your Linux server practically. All right, so tip number one, and this is the most basic, but also one of the most important, and that is you have to keep your server up to date. Uh, listen, I, I get it. You installed Linux and you're like, I'm going to update it whenever I remember to update it. I'll do that, right? No, you won't. You won't. You'll forget. <laughs> so you need to set up automatic updates. Automatic updates are the only way to be sure that your server is up to date, at least on security patches at all times. Uh, you can run this command on the screen, and that will update your system as a one-off. And then you can run these commands, and these will set up your system to update automatically when new security patches become available. Now, before we get too deep into this, I, I just want to say... I'm going to put all of these commands that I list in the description down below, and that way you can copy-paste them. But I want to urge you, do not copy-paste anything that you don't understand. Uh, that is a horrible idea. You shouldn't just blindly trust me. I'm just a talking face on YouTube. So if you don't understand what a command does, then research it first before you run it on your system. Don't just blindly trust people like me. You need to verify what you're doing. All right, so with all of that out of the way, let me move on to my next tip, and that is to not use the root account. Uh, you really don't want to use the root account for anything. You should never log into the root account. There should be no reason to. You should have a separate user account that has the ability to use the sudo command to elevate its permissions when it needs to. Like, look, I get it. I get it. Using the root account is convenient because it literally has access to everything. And it's, it's nice to not have any of that annoying security stuff in the way. Uh, but honestly, it's just dangerous, especially if your server's internet facing. So you can use these commands down below to add a new account to your Ubuntu server and to set it up as an administrator. All right, so this next one is really important. Uh, so, there's only a handful of ways that you can control a Linux server. Most of the time, that's over SSH. And so, SSH equals control of the server, so we have to protect SSH. There's a few ways that you can go about doing this. Uh, number one is I would disable password authentication. Uh, you see, if you have a public internet-facing Linux server, it's going to get thousands and thousands of attempts, uh, login attempts, every day, like at a minimum. And so if you're using a password, there's a chance that one of those passwords that, it, the, system, that the attackers are guessing ends up going through, and then your server's compromised. So instead of risking that, you can just not use passwords. And you might be wondering, well, if I don't use a password to log in, what do I use? Uh, SSH keys. SSH keys are cryptographic certificates. Don't worry too much about that. The way they work is you run this command and it sends your computer's key up to your server. And then whenever you want to log into your server from that computer, it sees the key and it just lets you in, like, immediately. You see, this is one of those rare circumstances uh, because in cybersecurity, we often say on one, one end of the scale, things are really easy to use. And then on the other end of the scale, uh, things are really secure. And this is one of those rare circumstances where you get to have it both ways. Because using an SSH key means you log in faster and easier, and it also means you log in more securely. So SSH keys are brilliant. Again, these are the commands that you run to get them set up. 
Uh, just don't lose your keys. <laughs> I mean, they have keys in the name. Don't lose your keys. You'll, you'll be locked out. You'll be screwed. Another tip, and this is really only useful if your server's internet facing, but you might want to change the default SSH port. If you change the default port to something else, then it means a lot of the automated attacks that go on on the public internet aren't going to be able to hit it. Uh, it's, but this is, don't just rely on this alone, right? This, it, this by itself isn't a very good protection because you can just figure out what port is actually listening. Uh, but it's good to get you off the radar of like the script kitties. And my next tip is another important one, and that is make sure your firewall's enabled. I've seen some distributions that come without a firewall enabled. Uh, Ubuntu does have one, but since you're watching this video, take a moment and just go check and make sure your firewall's running. Uh, here's, a, here's an example command of how you can enable firewall D. Uh, I'm sorry, uncomplicated firewall. But that will get you running at least. And my next tip for your Linux server is to use a package called fail2ban. It's very simple. Basically, it, it writes down every time someone attempts to log into your server, and after they fail three times, five times, whatever you set it to, but once they fail enough times, then it prevents that IP address from trying to log in again, which is really good. <laughs> it reduces the, the likelihood of a brute force attack getting into your server. And there's really no reason not to use it, even if your server's like on your home network, you may as well have this installed. And my next tip, and this one's a little bit more advanced, but you should remove any packages that you don't need. Uh, see, Ubuntu server comes with a pretty healthy selection of default packages, uh, but you're not going to need all of them, right? You're not going to use every single package it comes with, but those packages represent some innate risk because if there's a vulnerability in those packages that you're not using, well, the attacker can use them. So it's a good idea to both disable services that you're not using and to uninstall packages you don't need. You can do that using these commands right below. Okay, and this one, my, my final tip, this one is a little bit complicated and it's kind of a can of worms. The gist of it is that you should have a logging system. You need to have a server that collects your logs from other servers and analyzes them. Uh, this can take the form of a seam or an intrusion detection system. Uh, but my point is you should take your logs from your Ubuntu Linux server that you set up and feed those logs into a different server and from there analyze them and look for signs of compromise. Uh, this is, honestly, in my opinion, this is critical. Like, this is a, a, a bare minimum thing that you need to do. Because we've talked about all these layers of security that we're adding up here on the server over the course of this video. And the important thing to realize is that every single one of those layers is fallible. It is totally possible for somebody to get past your defenses, no matter how how advanced or how insane your defense is. No matter how sophisticated your defense is, it's never going to be totally safe. And so you need something that will tell you if you're compromised. And by default, an Ubuntu server is not going to do anything to tell you that. So I use a, a program called Waza. Waza, you install it on a server, and then you put all your logs from other servers into it, and it analyzes them and gives you alerts and stuff. It's great. Uh, use something like that. It doesn't have to be big or fancy, but just have a place where your logs go and analyze them and pay attention to it. That's really the most proactive thing that you can keep doing over time. All right, and those were my tips on how you can secure your Ubuntu Linux server. I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you want more cybersecurity tips or Linux information, uh, consider subscribing. I'm, uh, you know, it would have been, uh, mm, please.